Ford is in a better position right now than Toyota. That all comes down to leadership. Ford CEO Jim Farley is going about things the right way at Ford. And I think there's a pretty good chance that Ford's stock price will double this year. Right now, their price to earnings is at three. That means that if Ford does continue on the path it's set for and transform itself into being a successful electric car company by 2030, then there is huge growth potential in this company. Hello, my friends. I am the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you here. Ford CEO Jim Farley is taking a long journey to rebuild what is an old, antiquated, really an ancient company. But this is what he's doing. And I think it's going to work. Jim Farley faced intense investor pressure to spin off his company's electric vehicle business to unlock the rich values awarded to pure play EV outfits like Tesla, Lucid, and Rivian. Yes, I know Lucid and Rivian stock prices have collapsed lately, but still, they're worth hundreds of times multiples more than their current production. Instead, Farley decided to squeeze more out of Ford's 118-year-old combustion engine business in order to do something with that money, to reinvest it into what is clearly the future. The historic reorganization Farley announced on Wednesday of last week actually splits Ford in two, creating a Model E unit to scale up EV vehicle sales and Ford Blue to focus on traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. Now, right now, the truth is a lot of these people working in Ford Blue are thinking to themselves, asking questions publicly even, are we gonna lose our jobs? Internal combustion engines are clearly not the future. What are we doing here? The radical restructuring relies on gas burning vehicles to fund Ford's EV ambitions, which are massive. The automaker now says it will build 2 million EVs a year by 2026. That's a huge leap from the 27,140 electric Mustang mach es it sold last year, making it the second largest electric vehicle manufacturer in America. And it raised its margin goal for earnings before interest and taxes to 10% from a previous target of 8%. But how are they going to get there? Well, Ford's planning to boost profit from its traditional gasoline-powered business, selling fossil fuel-powered F-150 pickups and Bronco SUVs by slashing costs in its legacy operations, which will include layoffs, most certainly will. Well, Farley said it could include layoffs. That means it will. Rather than seek greater access to capital markets through the clean break a spin-off could bring, Farley said Ford will transform its internal combustion business into a profit and cash engine for the entire enterprise. Sounds ambitious. The most important thing is our core ICE, or internal combustion engine automotive business, Farley said in an interview with Bloomberg. It needs to be a lot more profitable. We think we're going to have to take about $3 billion dollars out of our structural costs to make that business fully competitive. Lots of cost restructuring going on at Ford. Interestingly, the media has responded quite positively to this, but they didn't do the same thing when Elon Musk did the same at Tesla a couple of years ago. Farley 59 has taken a long journey in his short 17 months as Ford's CEO to get to this point. His moves to accelerate Ford's plug-ins plans reversed a six-year slump in the stock which is up more than 170% since he took over, including an 8.4% gain last week on Wednesday when he made this announcement. However, Ford stock is still incredibly cheap when compared to other automakers, in particular, in comparison to other electric-only automakers. Now, this perceived performance over the last year has given him the ability to take on some risks, such as radically reshaping the company that Henry Ford founded in 1903. But of course, without risk, Ford will simply go bankrupt. He has no choice. Farley's family has been part of that story. He joined Ford in 2007 after a successful career at, of all companies, Toyota, where he rose to run the Lexus luxury division. But going to Ford was in some ways a homecoming. Farley's grandfather, Emma Tracy, was employee number 389 when he was hired into Ford's Model T factory back in 1914, more than 100 years ago. 
finally raised the automaker's wager, upping the ante on EVs months after taking over as CEO. Bloomberg News first reported last month that the company was contemplating a further increase in expenditures toward electric vehicles. On top of everything we've heard already, and that Farley had wanted to wall off electric operations from the internal combustion engine business. In other words, what he really wants to do is change the way that things go on at Ford. He wants to turn the company from a big, slow-moving behemoth in order to be something more like Tesla, to push the boundaries of what had been considered possible at the old company. Farley, in September, poached Doug Field from running Apple Inc.'s secretive car project, However, prior to Apple, Field had been Tesla's chief engineer and the man behind its top-selling Model 3 sedan. Farley put him to work reshaping the company into something much more agile than what it is now. Together, they exhaustively examined ways to spin off either the EV business, the internal combustion business, or to find a way for both, for the company to perceive as Tesla is, the world's most valuable automaker. We looked at a spin-off, Farley said at a news conference, but number one, we have enough capital. We can fund this ourselves. Personally, I'm not so sure. I think the reason they looked at a spin-off is because they need funds in order to build this new electric vehicle company. Now, Farley said he didn't want to separate his nascent EV business from the industrial expertise of Ford's century-old combustion engine business which can efficiently spit out millions of models every year. The new startups would love to have the industrial know-how of this company. Why would we spin out Model E and risk that, Farley said. We looked at it carefully, and this leverage is really the key point. He does make a good point. Lucid and Rivian could do with some of that power right now. Another challenge Farley would have faced in the spin-off scenario would be winning over the founding Ford family, which continues control of the company through a special class of stock, the family which holds three seats on the board led by executive chair Bill Ford is loath to lose its influence of a company they've held sway for five generations. Keeping the changes internal kind of settles the concerns of these Ford blue bloods, but it also creates a complex corporate construction where one quasi-independent unit, Ford Blue, funds another quasi-independent unit, Model E. Each operation will have its own profit and loss statement starting next year. Farley contends that each semi-independent unit will flourish with more time to hone in on the particular task at hand. We can't compete with the very best of the ice or the electric vehicle world by working on battery electrics from 9 till 10 in the morning, Farley said in the interview. We have to be focused. Farley also is boosting Ford's bet again on EVs, adding another 20 billion to take the total tab up to 50 billion invested by 2026. That's a lot of money, as Bloomberg has previously also reported. That cash will come from the legacy business where the F-Series pickup generates 42 billion a year in revenue, making it larger by that measure than McDonald's, Coca-Cola, or Starbucks. We just raised our volume essentially by a million units to 2 million EVs a year, Farley said. With that comes lots of capital for battery plants, new vehicles and platforms, tooling and raw material for batteries, he said. And those demands meant that Ford needed to keep its profit engine, traditional business yoked to the upstart EV operations. What was the market's reaction? So far, investors like what they see. Driving shares up since the announcement. We are positive on the change as we believe it better aligns internal Ford stakeholders to drive towards being more competitive, Joe Spack, an analyst with RBC Capital Markets, said. We wouldn't be surprised to see other OEMs follow a similar template. Ford's split represents a better allocation of dollar and human capital. Bank of America Securities analyst John Murphy wrote in a note to clients, this move will allow Ford to attract more EV talent and gain access to lower cost of capital, including through green bonds, said Murphy who has a buy rating on the stock. Now, this is what Joel Levington from Bloomberg Intelligence, a credit analyst, says. We assume that a potential separation wouldn't happen until after 2026, making longer dated issues at Ford Motor the most exposed. But Ford could consider a variety of mechanisms, including another debt tender or raising debt at the new company as a tool to eliminate longer-term debt. 
Under the new structure, Farley will also assume the role of president of Ford Model E, while Field will be the unit's chief EV and digital systems officer. Kumar Galhotra will serve as president of the Ford Blue business, and Ho Tai Tang will lead product development, supply chain, and manufacturing engineering as chief industrial platform officer. Is this about winning? 100%. Farley said on a call with journalists Wednesday, we want to beat the old players. We want to beat the new players. We want to beat everyone. So can they do it? Well, that remains to be seen. In my view, Ford are definitely in with a tough time. They have a lot of debt right now, and they need to make a lot of money from their current ICE business in order to put that into building their new EV business. Is that possible? Well, we don't know because timing is the key issue here. Can get Ford get the timing right? Can they build enough factories to build these electric vehicles in time before they're disrupted by other automakers? Well, they might be able to do that because Ford currently, well, essentially control the pickup market in the US. And it's gonna take a long time before that market is completely disrupted. I think Ford have time, but I do think they need to do things with a sense of urgency that the company has never seen before. Thanks for watching.